like the thing that uh, that sparked this want to have this be my standout feature in my future content is me being extremely tired of people shitting on Hanna Barbera cartoons. Do, do, do they really get shat on? Yes. For but, what? For being cheap looking. At, okay. Without the, like you can. Yes, they were budget cartoons. As they were, were very small budget. They were like UPA cartoons. But I feel like... I, I am of the full respect. You don't have to like something to respect uh, it. Yeah. And the, the thing is, is that, you know, without the precedent of limited... Of how to make economical and limited animation as Hanna-Barbera did for TV animation, we wouldn't have the, the basically cartoon renaissance that we are having now if, because we are now in an era where we have serialized animation, which if you went back a few years ago, no one would even think about that. And I mean, we wouldn't have Cartoon Network without Hanna-Barbera content. There's a lot of shit that Hanna-Barbera did that no, a lot no, of no, people- No, 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 I mean like literally. Uh -huh. Cartoon Network was made as a station because Ted Turner had over 4,000 hours worth of Hanna-Barbera and MGM content. Which, if people don't realize this, if you think that Han if Joseph Hanna and William, William Hanna and Joseph Barbera, sorry, are hacks, remember that they are Oscar-winning animators? Because without them, you wouldn't have Tom- they are the creators of Tom and Jerry, and I think people forget that. Just the very fact that, okay, so visually, yeah, there's a lot of flat colors, but it was also a product of its time. So you're judging something based on what the product of its time is without looking into the concept or idea. Um, if there was any like anything from Hanna-Barbera I didn't like or wasn't too big of a fan of, it was the Flintstones. And that's because I just wasn't a fan of the jokes that they were implying. I mean, and, I mean also, I, I think like a big, a big point of contention that needs to be accepted, especially with something like the Flintstones, is the Flintstones was essentially an animated pastiche of the Honeymooners, which is a sitcom that you did not grow up with because it was it was a product of that time, mm -hmm. but it did set the precedent for the animated primetime show because that was the first primetime show that was that was animated because uh, before that, Hanna Barbera cartoons were regulated to Saturday morning. I mean, yeah. Also, if you want to, like, if people are going to complain about how flat cartoons look, aren't there also a lot of flat, like, coloring in, like, recent cartoon shows? Well, yes. <laughs> Here's the thing. Mm. I, I think, I, I, there is a, there is a specific movie. And for, if people want to know if Brett's playing this right now, I am just, the, I am the Dan of this situation. Oh, shit, talking. yeah. No, I know, I, keep playing. Oh, okay, okay. Um... I already proved how good of a gamer I am at this with the versus mode, but the, <laughs> the, um, the mo a movie that I really uh, implore or insist that people see that shows that the character design of, uh, I think people don't know how to separate character design from animation, because you can have simplistic character designs that are I feel like people can all come to the agreement that uh, Ruby Spears, Hanna-Barbera cartoons have very aesthetically pleasing character designs. They are very, like, graphic. They have, like, they're made of geometric shapes. They are just easy on the eyes. And, um, the, actually, the first movie, th this is the film I'm going to lead up to that I think people should see. The first movie that was based off a TV show. Mm-hmm. Was was the Yogi Bear movie? When did that come out? 1964. 1965. Damn, that is a long time ago. Keep in mind, Yogi Bear was actually the first spin-off cartoon because it was part of, I think, the Huckleberry Hound show, which was a, a block of Huckleberry Hound and two other animated programs, and Yogi was part of that. And eventually, Yogi got his own series. Mm -hmm. Um, and the Yogi Bear animated film, I think it's a uh, Hey There, It's Yogi Bear or something like that, has beautiful animation. Like, some of the scenes rival, uh, you know, the 60s era of Disney animation at the time. 
and you know they still have the same character designs it's still that thick outlined look but it shows that character design is not indicative of if the animation will be good or not anything can look good with enough good animation mm -hmm. um also, I think it's a fantastic movie. I don't know where you can get it legally right now. I'm pretty sure you could probably find it on Amazon Prime Video or something. I don't know if it's on HBO Max because they've been weird with transferring stuff from Boomerang onto there, even though they have some of that content. But eventually, I think they're going to integrate the Boomerang app. So. Yeah, but it is, uh, also the soundtrack of that Yogi Bear movie is really nice. They have some nice jazzy sounds and everything. You know, funny, sorry for interrupting. No, so, go ahead, I've been, I've been yammering on. I didn't even know that there was, like, a Yogi Bear the movie back then. Like, I know that there was the live-action Yogi Bear movie, which I was guessing ever since there was the Chipmunk movie. Um... Yeah, oh, you mean the Dan Aykroyd movie? The Dan Aykroyd and Justin Timberlake. Which, can we just say, uh... My opinions on the story of that movie aside, Dan Aykroyd and Justin Timberlake make a fantastic... Like, Dan Aykroyd does a great Yogi voice, and Justin Timberlake has a really good boo-boo voice. Like, it, it's kind of like how... It was one of those surprising things, like how Brendan Fraser does a good uh, Tasmanian Devil, because he did the Tasmanian Devil's voice in Looney Tunes Back in Action. Uh-huh. And we stand Brendan Fraser in this house. He's a good boy. He is. And he was blacklisted by the fucking movie industry because of a bitchy divorce. And I am so glad he's on Doom Patrol now because I, I love that man. Hold on, what the fuck happened to him? Uh, it, that, that is too much for me to go into. Okay, then. But, you know, there's a reason why, uh, he, why it seemed like after the early 2000s you didn't see him in anything. I but, remember that he was in Journey to the Center of the Earth. We want to remember Journey to the Center of the Earth. It was that bad? Eh, I'm, I'm ambivalent about it. <laughs> um, I mean, the other... I don't know if they put this in film in theaters, but there is also I, uh, the man called Flintstone, which was an which I, I think was a TV movie, but it was essentially the finale to the Flintstones before okay. they started making all the '80s specials and stuff. Okay. But the thing is, is that without Hanna Barbera and without the intense work ethic they had, because they knew that there was a world of animation to pioneer. Mm -hmm. That the that the industry of like animated short films in cinema was going to become a relic of the past. And they knew that because MGM fired them. They were like Wait, 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 hold on, what? Okay, so back in the day MGM closed their animation department. You know, they they were like, Thanks Joe, thanks Will, yeah, yeah, you gave us like eight Oscars. Bye. And keep, wow. keep in mind, uh, Tom and Jerry shorts back in the day were like funded with like maybe a fifty thousand dollar budget, which you know back in the forties. It was probably big. It, 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 if you account for inflation, it's huge. And then you go to the budget for an average like Hanna Barbera episode, and you got like five thousand. So nearly like a, I don't know great percentages, but you know a 95% difference and one of the biggest things is that they were making the pilots for the for I think because Huckleberry was not the first show they did they did like a, another dog show um, they made the storyboards in like their dining rooms and stuff they had like their kids help color the storyboards and stuff this was a very homegrown thing the, to make Hanna Barbera Studios, and then they be they you know they make some of the most iconic characters of all time, and I think all people also chat. If you're tired of me talking about Hanna Barbera, let me know. Oh um, no, like it's, I can be an absolute dork when it comes to animation. But I mean, like the other big thing is, I think people forget 
how long Hanna-Barbera actually lasted because I think people like kind of default to, okay, they made a bunch of like the kitty versions of their shows back in the 80s and that's it. Tom and Jerry kids and a pup named Scooby-Doo. And Flintstones kids and, and Captain Caveman Jr. Wait, stuff. there was a Flintstones kids? Yeah, they, they did Flintstones kids. Shit. Um, which they also, which they interspersed with like Captain Caveman shorts, but not Captain Caveman and the Teen Angels. It was Captain Caveman, which apparently was a character in this version of the Flintstones universe, which I guess makes sense. But um, keep in mind, the first cartoon cartoons are Hanna-Barbera properties. Powerpuff Girls, Dexter's Lab, and uh, Nitty. Two Stupid Dogs, like all, Johnny Bravo, they are all Hanna-Barbera properties. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of like, figured there would be. I mean, you know. Your, oh, shit! Your opinions on creators are not we wouldn't have what a cartoon or anything like that without um without the without Hanna Barbera. Oh, and so fuck. we went and with that we wouldn't like Hanna Barbera caused one of the biggest domino effects that I think rivals Disney in the creators that we have today. You know, and I think and it deserves. Yeah. You know, people think of the titans of animation being Warner Brothers because of the because of Looney Tunes. And then, yeah. and and then um, and Disney, obviously. Yeah. But I think ah, in terms it. of of legacy, mm -hmm. I think Hanna Barbera is one that deserves more credit. I've had Chris and everyone tell me that I I should write like an uh, encyclopedia or something about the history of Hanna Barbera. Well, it's something, yeah. Some kind of educational material, and I have thought about it because it is. It is an insane thing. The thing is, if I, if I did a video just retrospecting all of... You know Linkara's Power Rangers retrospective that goes on for fucking ever? I, did, I, I forgot he ever did that. That would be that, because there's so much history to Hanna-Barbera that it is insane. And every video would have to be like an hour long. Because you're talking about nearly over half a century worth of stuff. 